morning folks uh, or evening if you're in the UK, afternoon if you're in the US. Uh, today's Coffee with Job and a couple of M&Ms as well. Now, obviously you're watching this, but I suspect that some people when they see the title go, ah, it's got, what, what's that about? It's got nothing to do with me. I think this is really important. We're talking about adultery and we're going to Job chapter 31. And uh, just an amazing wee section that I think is really, really helpful. It's a Bible teaching that's so outrageous that people just laugh at it. And our society teaches the very opposite. It really is countercultural to think like this. But this is what Job says in Job chapter 31 and verse 9. If my heart has been enticed by a woman, or if I've lurked at my neighbor's door, then may my wife grind another man's grain, and may other men sleep with her. For that would have been wicked, a sin to be judged. It is a fire that burns to destruction. Abaddon is the Hebrew, which is uh, another expression that sometimes people would use for the underworld or hell. It would have uprooted my harvest. You know, when I... I've been looking at TikTok, which has now become the most popular way of people connecting on social media. It horrifies me, actually. I am going to do something on it because I just want to take the devil's tools, if you like, and use them to, for the glory of God. But there's so much stuff of people glorying in their shame, advertising swingers clubs and, and everything else. But you don't just need that. You get the, the Times or the Sydney Morning Herald or other newspapers, respectable family newspapers, who on the one hand will create a fuss if a politician has an affair, but on the other hand gives their listeners or their readers guides to affairs. Doesn't, why, why, not, why not sleep around? Why not commit adultery? Doesn't it spice up your marriage? That makes sense in a world where sex is just an appetite to be indulged. It makes no sense with human beings created in the image of God, who are relational beings, who know how to love, and whose bodies are not just to be indulged in lust. So, here Job is talking about adultery, and, and, and in patriarchal societies, adultery was a serious crime. Uh, because your partner, particularly if you're a woman, you're deemed to be owned. And I guess that's part of the reaction against so much of all of this. But even out with that, you belong to one another. You commit yourself to one another. Your body is not your own. It is for your partner and for your partner only. And this is the teaching that is so scandalous. It is that sex is for marriage and for marriage only. Marriage is based on trust and fidelity. And Job says, I just didn't do any of this. I, if, look, let me be cursed if I did any of this. It's a fire that burns to destruction. One man says this, it consumes a man's soul, destroys his reputation, his conscience, his body, his family relationships, his future, and even his increase. Now, that's the same for women as well. Proverbs 6, 27 says this, Can a man scoop fire into his lap without his clothes being burned? Can a man walk on hot coals without his feet being scorched? So is he who sleeps with another man's wife. No one who touches her will go unpunished. One of the things that intrigues me about this is how churches sometimes elevate a particular sexual sin above others. So you, you may hear sermons against homosexuality, what about adultery? I guess there are far more people who've committed adultery in our congregations than there are those who are living or engaged in homosexual relationships. And then I think of preachers and pastors, how many have fallen. And you know, some of that is because people think you have power and some people are attracted to that. A couple of times in, in decades of ministry that's happened to me, not that I've committed adultery, but I remember one in particular 
where a woman came in, sat down, and it was abundantly clear, even to someone with as low an, an emotional IQ as me, that she was basically coming on to me. And I just said to her, what are you doing? And she, she looked at me and she said, won't you sleep with me? And I said, no, I won't. She says, don't you find me attractive? I said, no, no not when you behave like that. No, but even if I did, that's not the issue. She said, I had a bet that I would sleep with the worst man in the village and with the best man. And I've already slept with the worst man. So I thought you as the minister would be the best man. And I said, well, I'm not. And no. And I said, honestly, that's not what your body is for. That's not what sex is for. I know that it's a temptation in so many ways, but I took a vow. I made a covenant like Job did. And it's just wrong to break that covenant. And those of you who are in relationships and you, you, you're in an adulterous relationship, you just have to stop it. And those of us, who, you know, who get tempted in that way, we just simply say, no, we're not going there. I made a vow. And, you know, I answer not just to the one I love. I'd answer not just to my wife or to my husband, but I answer to God. Now, it's true that a marriage can be restored if, if, you, if you break this commandment. But this is one ground that Jesus allows for divorce. So you can see how serious it is. Anyone who divorces his wife except for sexual immorality makes her the victim of adultery. Do you know this? What a difference it would make to our culture, to our society, to our families. If we kept our promises and if we were faithful to those we have promised to be faithful to. Well, God bless you. We shall return tomorrow to look at another aspect of, of, of all of this. Uh, and again, isn't it incredible just how the Bible fits our culture so well? All right, see you tomorrow, probably without my M&Ms.